Hello goblins, it's Chris, Eldritch Pipes. Welcome to episode 4 in the Pipe Makers series. And today we are off to British Columbia in Canada to look at the pipe maker Stephen Downey. Now, I don't remember exactly when I came across Stephen's work, but it was pretty early on. Um, because even though our styles are very different, we have some similar influences. Well, one similar influence. But anyway, Stephen's been making pipes since 2003, so let's have a look at what he does. Stephen does, well he's done a lot of work, but I would somewhat break his work into roughly three areas, roughly three areas what I would call his normal pipes. We'll take a look at those first. Then his more uh, sculptural pieces. But then the sculptural pieces themselves break more or less cleanly into two parts. And that is sculptural as in almost architectural, and then sculptural as in uh, creature pieces, that kind of thing. But hopefully we're going to see what, if anything, binds them all together. Take a look inside Stephen's pipe brain. All right. So, I deliberately picked this piece to start with first. It's called a fire drop, which is a lovely name, and you can sort of see the the sort of the idea how this sort of pipe whips whips up at the bottom. It would sort of like drop down from the mouth and kind of like swoop up, which is really nice. There's there's a lot going on. As far as I know, I haven't seen anyone else produce a shape quite like this. So this is like a Stephen Downey original here. You've got the, the pipe bowl itself, and the pipe bowl is kind of conforming to our sort of high grade um, influences. So it's all following the the grain around the bowl that's really lovely but also you can see the sweep of the grain kicking up around the uh, the shank but then it all gets a bit fancy there's at least two kinds of wood going on there uh, possibly an olive wood I think the large chunk and then some kind of Maybe it's rosewood, some kind of black wood. Itself sort of like laminated between two bits of lighter wood. Perhaps an acrylic, who knows. And then we go into a fancy Cumberland stem. So that is a lot going on there. But this kind of like elaborate shank work is... We're going to see that a lot, that he seems to, I think he likes how that extra shank work can give you shapes that you couldn't otherwise do very easily. So obviously there he's almost using shank extensions a bit like bamboo to give you shapes that you couldn't otherwise get. Um, because obviously there you're drilling around well, the shank with its extensions is, is doing quite a, quite a severe bend there. And it's only the shank additions that are allowing him to do that, produce this exotic shape. 
and we're going to see that crop up a fair bit. So the downy fire drop. So I thought after looking at that rather exotic piece, before we go super crazy like we're going to in a bit, let's look at what Stephen does when he's doing more standard shapes. So this first fellow is a an author. We can see he is shaping to grain. As far as I can tell, Stephen will shape to grain whenever possible. So yeah, so he's working with the sort of the high grade mindset. Then at the end of this one, it's again some laminations, some accent wood. And I think just an acrylic stem, I don't think that last wide piece is on the stem, I think it's on the shank. Usually you do see occasionally some people putting embellishments on the stem, uh, but I think personally the best way is embellishments on the shank. It's the most uh, stable, I think is the best way to put it. And that's like a clear tortoiseshell acrylic there. And a billiard. I was just con sort of looking at the transition here. And it's kind of open. It's not super sharp. So it's kind of... It's, it's, it's more relaxed than we'd seen from like uh, Phil Rivara's. Uh, but then, lamination, accent wood, and a final piece on the end there. And his um, stem as well is kind of, he's shaped that off to do a kind of, you can see, it's almost like a half saddle, where the top part, kind of brings the shank shape to an end and then the, the stem extends off from that which is a nice touch. This is another little pot shape. Um, I don't know if I've seen Stephen do any sandblast. If I have, I can't currently recall them. This is, looks like a rustication but it's a really tight detailed rustication Look at the shank end, you have a lamination piece, then a... Now that, there it is hard to tell if, that's, if that white segment is on the end of the stem. I think it's on the end of the shank, a shank extension. And saddle stem there. And then a kind of chubby pot which is really nice, really nice colouring. You can see like the, the contrast staining really bringing out the bird's eye. So that's probably a piece of uh, cross cut briar. A lamination piece, probably this time, ebonite or a black acrylic, an accent piece. Hard to tell from the photo whether it's, it's an acrylic accent or a a very light wood and then saddle stem. You can see again the transition on that really open. I really like it. Um, it's just the stem flows into the bowl. That's the way I put it. Okay. So now we're getting a bit fancier with a shape that I'm not quite sure what to call. I'll call it a, an apple 
but quite complex shaping. It looks like we've got a rusticated bowl, but you can see the lines. He's like separated the bowl visually from uh, from the shank with both rustication against smooth colour against bare briar it looks like but also he's actually like created the effect of the bowl sitting on top of the shank and then uh, a lamination layer uh, possibly a horn extension there and then a stem with the same kind of idea that was on the billiard. So a kind of half saddle using the top part to kind of, you can see it bringing the, the shank to a, a kind of a termination point and then the rest of the stem flowing off underneath. So it's, it's quite complex. Do you know what I mean? There's so many ideas going off in that design. And the lines are really crisp as well. Um, I put this in because this this was like a pipe that was falling in between. It's kind of like a, a bridge piece between ordinary pipes and getting fancier. <laughs> Although I suppose the previous pipe was pretty fancy. This is a hawk bill. And stained really nicely, so it's a, so we're looking at a contrast stain. We're looking at sort of very natural shank to bowl transition. Actually, that's a little bit tighter than we've seen before. Possibly, it's just a natural function of the shape, that shank sort of like coming in, the way it comes into the bowl. And then the stem kind of bending, the shank sorry, kind of bending in that wrong way. <laughs> but then a lamination layer, extension, and again that half saddle using the, the top part of the saddle to create a, an end point to the, to the shank. To the shank shape. This is the start of just there's a just one or two kind of bulldog shapes. So the, obviously this first piece it's like he's he's really got all the bird's eye on the top rim on the slant of that. And now, <laughs> that's, um, I don't know if that was by design or he got lucky there. Normally, on a kind of angle like that, it would be, you'd, you'd be getting like lots of flame grain, which is where you're not seeing, okay, let me get my block of briar. So straight grain is as you see it there. Um, bird's eye is when you're seeing the the grain end on and um, flame grain is kind of halfway between the two if you like it would cut a straight segment there you'd see the, the fibers sort of a 45 degree sort of angle more or less but on that angled bulldog rim he seems to have near perfect bird's eye. Lines really sharp on the on the shank, and again we've got the lamination, uh, possibly possibly zebra wood shank extension, or um, accent, and there uh, now saddle stem. No ordinary saddle stem. A very stylized saddle stem.
on the next one oh, I mean you can see like the so it's a contrast stain again you can see the straight grain coming up underneath which is really nice you can see the transition as it gets it's nice and open looks like there could be a panel on the side of this bulldog I don't know if it exactly fits the definition of a bulldog but I'm going to call it a bulldog then a lamination piece an accent wood and a half saddle stem using the top half to kind of <laughs> you know, bring that termination point to the end of, of the shank eye line, I almost want to say. Really nice bend on that stem as well. It's just got, you don't often see a, a bulldog with such a, such a nice curve to it. It was a squat bulldog. Maybe attempted to call it a squat bulldog. And the shape after that is it's even harder to put a name to. It seems to be related to that squat bulldog. And yet it's it's kind of its own creation. It has some lines that are suggestive. Uh, that rim is almost that rim line is almost where the bulldog line would be a really interesting feature about this one is you can see he's polished the inside of the rim just like the top sort of five millimeters or something and that's really like super sharp as well it like stops at this point um, I think I have seen that detail like this um, polished and stained, this is a completed inner rim part on a couple of uh, his shapes. I'll point it out if I see it again. Really lovely sort of mahogany, red-brown stain. Obviously this is more like a, like a horn shape so this transition point isn't so important here. But then again it looks like uh, a light lamination, a dark lamination, and a, an accent wood in the white, another black, another white, and then his half saddle stem using the top part to finish the top line of the shank. That's a lot going on. All I can say is that I guess Stephen really loves um, shank embellishment. But it's in a really, I say that, there's, there's a lot going on, but it's also, he keeps it classy. You know what I mean? It's not like bright colours or anything like that. It's, it's, it's muted, but it's, so it's subtle, but it's there. This next one's a prince, and I kind of included it because um, I love princes. And it's always, I, not everyone does a prince, and of those that do, I don't like very many of them. Uh, a prince is a, just one of those shapes um, that I think a lot of people get wrong. I've spent a lot of time trying to get the prince shape right, right to my eye. And Stephen really does a great prince. There's something about a prince that really works with this kind of rocky, craggy rustication. Uh, you can see that the transition, there's no side shot, unfortunately, that I could find. But you can tell from here that, again, the transition is quite open. And then 
the stem is unusual for a prince. So this is like a Stephen Downey touch. It kind of, it looks like it might flare out slightly before scooping back in for, I suppose it's technically a saddle stem. Hard to say. It's his own kind of stem. This next piece is really interesting. It's almost a Zulu, but it's like a really super stylized Zulu. It's got this line running right down. It looks like the line runs from the the button right the way through to the rim of the the bowl on either side, creating this eye shape. Super unusual. You can see the rim looks of the bowl is kind of flat and then just curves over as it goes to the chamber, which is a really interesting detail. I um, was asked Stephen what was going on with the shank because it looks like the, the end of the shank is kind of curving like that. Um, I wasn't quite able to get to the bottom of it. But it looks, um, just looks really interesting. I'm not sure if that's a, a horn stem or an acrylic stem. I think my bet would be it's acrylic, but you never know. You can see it from that side view as well. It looks like the shank is, is cut. Instead of cut straight, it looks like it's cut at an angle. It's bizarre. But I wonder if the stem is fixed or does it come out? I don't know what's going on there. And then this kind of Rhodesian with a, with a similar thing going on. Looks like the shank is, is almost is cut at an angle and that I don't know how you'd do that. <laughs> or maybe it's a or maybe it's a visual illusion and it doesn't go together quite how it looks, I don't know. But you can see on these, that's on both of those were really nice contrast stains as well. I do, I appreciate it when pipe makers, so a contrast stain is a pain. It's a pain, but it's always worth it in my opinion. Just staining a pipe brown and calling it done is um is i think misses the point even if grain isn't perfect it's it's always beautiful <laughs> and so you know it is a, a feature it's always a feature some people forget that i think uh, but not stephen most I, in fact i can't think of a, of a pipe where he hasn't done some version of a contrast stain. I say it's a pain just because you... It's a, it, it's a painstaking process. You, ju you can't just do all your sanding, stain it, polish it, done. You have to be careful. All right. Now we're getting super serious. So this is a ram seed. Now, there are technical feet anyway. You can see, so onto the ram seeds, he's put an accent wood. He's got that curious detail of um, polishing the inside rim and you can see it's 
admittedly, it's a little bit awkward to see here, but the grain is all flowing up the side like that. So on the block, the the tobacco chamber hole is like about here and everything else is running up the side like that. Meaning at the back, whoa, <laughs> whoa, that amazing, amazing bird's eye. So that is the back, that's what you're seeing. Obviously in a, in a super cool contrast stain. And that's just stunning. Okay, uh, this um, sort of cavalier apple kind of shape. I picked this one out just because of all, because of the lines going on. There's a, he does a lot of detailed lines in his work. I didn't pick out loads of pieces to demonstrate that. Um, although you have seen some of them anyway. But obviously, like on that, he's taken the line from the shank and instead of it just disappearing into the bowl, as you would normally expect, he's carried it on outside the bowl, which is really lovely detail. It's almost uh, like an oriental influence there um, but I can't think of anything else that in his work that looks like that and you know look at the foot of the cavalier <laughs> it's like in a different word with an accent word Okay, so now we're moving. We're going to be moving into fantasy land, I think. I pulled this one up just because it shows the his kind of his carving eye. It's a really precise, sort of really well shaped. Really well planned, I imagine. I've seen some of his design drawings, you know, it's like, it's planned out. And it's sanded as well. I mean, I can't <laughs> convey to you what sanding this would have been like. But Stephen, I know, is a fearless sander <laughs> in the sense of he will just get a piece of sandpaper that is as small as is needed and just work meticulously away. I mean, it's all right on a, on a large area, but it's when you get to the edges, if you just like, if you put too much pressure on or you just hit it wrong with a fresh piece of sandpaper, you just take off too much stain and you have to stain it again and start again and hope you don't do the same mistake the next time round. And just imagine how many places there are to go wrong on a pipe like that. A lot of work, a lot of patience. It's kind of like, um, it, it evokes the Nautilus feel with that kind of spiral. And then if we were in any doubt, it was a Stephen Downey pipe, sort of a, a lamination, uh, shank extension, and a very Stephen Downey pipe stem. Kind of like, what is it? Like, it starts off straight, then it flares out, and then it scoops back in. See that design on 
quite a lot of his pipes. So, a calabash. I can't even imagine the construction here. Would have had to have glued laminations of, uh, what is it, maple, some kind of black wood, or into a piece to make the gourd part from. Oh, there's just so much going on. Um, and looks like there's some metal work as well on the shank end there. I think this is one of, it's either called um, Moriarty or it's called Lestrade. It's, it's from the Sherlock Holmes canon anyway. All these calabashes in these laminated wood effects are in the Sherlock style. I guess it's because it's a calabash and calabashes are associated with Sherlock. But then a briar center. Okay so now we're going sort of into this sculptural architectural thing. It's kind of part steampunk, part art deco sort of, you know, a bit that you'd see on a door or, or a building. Um, and look, oh my goodness. So on those square, consecutive square pieces, the sanding would have been a nightmare. All of those edges are just a perfect place to scrape too much off. You know, dull the edge, take the stain off, just ruin your day. And he's got loads, just made so much work for himself. But creating this completely unique, it's like it's contrast stained as well. Let me just double check. Yeah. It's just quite mad. And the second piece, uh, it's again in this kind of Art Deco style. I think when Stephen thinks steampunk, he automatically goes Art Deco, has that association. And you do see like these like construction elements, so it's like bolt, the top piece is bolted in. really dark stain on that one which would have made sanding it just even even worse because obviously if he'd hit any high spots it would show up like nobody's business another calabash but this time like in this steampunk art deco style I don't know if this one, this one might be called Nemo, which is like total like League of Gentlemen. Am I thinking League of Gen League of Extraordinary Gentlemen? And then you got like these like jewel accents or like, well, glass accents. These kind of brass rivets and stuff going on. So much construction work. I don't even know. I can't quite tell what's happening with the shank and stem. There's so much going on. But just, <laughs> just an amazing fantasy piece. And look at that spider. Oh my goodness. Right. There's no way you couldn't put this piece in. Just the the concept is really cool. Uh, all that, the, the pipe nestling amongst all these legs. 
but obviously not organic it's in this it's almost fits with the art deco thing in this kind of steampunky vibe going on but uh, it's beautiful okay and now we're going full-on sort of character carving this is kind of like the the final section so we're moving away from these kind of uh, architectural and steampunk elements to these fantasy and animal sort of like life carvings I suppose obviously this is just an insane piece of dragons round a bowl um, with that kind of like bespoke metal work sort of biting onto the shank at one end and it's top and tailing the shank. The Stephen Downey stem straight flaring out scooping back in and I'm just zooming in so yeah it's like so there's a, we can see two dragons here. We can see the wings are smooth, the bodies are scaled. You know, this is not just jabbing a tool into the wood. This is, I'm making scales. I'm going to carve scales into this dragon. This is like next level stuff. The dragon's got a spine, sort of like, working down its body it's just really highly detailed you can even see the ears on the dragon the eyes on the dragon it's like hyper detailed wow i want to see is it one dragon or maybe another two dragons on the other side not quite sure and then you've got the on the bottom bowl part, like these scales. And these ravens, wow, these ravens are awesome. Obviously the the raven head is 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 briar. I'm not sure what the I guess we have to call it a shank. I'm not sure what it, what you'd call it. It's almost like, um, I wonder if it is in functionality like a cavalier that the any moisture can fall to the bottom and you can unscrew that to clean it out. But I just really like the kind of stripped. It kind of feels really lean. Kind of just... It feels minimal, even though there's so much going on. Obviously a Balrog. A Balrog. Um, which is just a monumental piece of work. And just the level of detail. I think that's kind of what is breathtaking. It's the level of detail. To like, to not just have stain going everywhere and just like, it's in the eyes, but no, he's like, the stain is where he wants it. There's some interesting like coloration going on there with it going like into like, the black going into like rusty reds. Yeah. On all those scales, Kind of like, like scale segments, those horn segments, really sharply defined. Now he also does these um, pipes of the year, like the Chinese New Year animal. Each year he'll do one, at least one. And um, I think his said his favourite was the ball, but actually. My favourite was this one, was the monkey. I don't know. There's just something about 
the expression on the monkey's face. Those kind of black eyes. I think it's the shaping of the of the hair. It's a little Wolverine-esque. I just really I love this one. Like the face, really smooth, had you know polished and then going into highly detailed hair. I think it's really great. And this alien pipe is something else as well. I think, where's the, where's the tobacco chamber? I can't see it. Oh, it must be on the other side because the stem's bending up that way. Okay, so the, the chamber's on the other side. It's pointing downwards in this photo. But that's just crazy details. It's it just really it's a it's a Geiger drawing in 3D. And it's just the mixture of high detail with high polish. It's just it's painstaking work, one to get the detail and then to go, and I'm gonna polish that as well. Lots of people will get detail but leave it rough. But this is like high detail, high polish. And just really nicely coloured as well. And then I finished on this one. He has a nice term for some of these uh, designs that he calls creatures of smoke. I think that's right. And I really love this one. This is called, uh, I think it's King of Thorns. I think that's right. And it just really reminds me of like, there was, a, there was this wood carving that used to hang in my granddad's house. Really long, thin, and you know, of, of this old man's face carved in wood. This, this really reminds me of that. It's a little bit Swamp Thing-esque, but those luminous green eyes. And it just looks like it's been carved out of an ancient piece of wood. And uh, and then the piece of bamboo on the back looking quite unusual. I like the green theme as well. Any pipe that's green is good in my book. Well... All right, so I think really the thing to take away is just the insane level of detail in Stephen's pipes and how he enjoys the process of, of, of building stuff onto his pipes. There's always some element of, of high design running through whatever he's doing, which is just fascinating. And different, again, to all the pipe makers we've looked at so far. I hope you enjoyed that. Right, that's going to be it for this little batch of pipe makers. I will be back again at some point with another batch. But until then, take it very easy the loyal pipe maker.